Thank you, Mr. President. Um, you know, I, I'm not on finance either. I'm, I've been more an observer in this process than anything else, uh, but I've observed well. And, and one thing I don't hear anything about is this revenue estimate. We're looking at a budget here that I believe has about a $4.2 billion revenue estimate, which we have no responsibility for, if I'm correct. That comes from the governor. He tells us what the revenue is going to be. And yet I look at this year we're in right now, fiscal year 16, and we're projecting that to finish at $3.8 billion, if I, if I read the numbers right. I'm just a lowly businessman. Well, that's, that's $400, 000, $400 million different than what we're saying we're going to produce with this budget for fiscal year 17. And I can't imagine what anybody could be thinking downstairs, upstairs, wherever, that somehow, magically, we're going to do $400 million better in revenue than we are this year. And I hear people say, well, yeah, we're already in trouble for next year. We're still in trouble with this budget here. We can pass it today. And the truth is we haven't done anything. This is smoke and mirrors. This is kabuki theater, if you ask me, for anything I've ever seen. And yet, and yet, I hear these various constituencies say this. We need more revenue. I heard the gentleman over there stand up and say, we're broke, we need more revenue. And the next day, vote against the revenue. We need to lead. We're the upper chamber. And then the next day, why do that? It'll be rejected by the House. The revenue was rejected already, save one member of that caucus over there. In finance yesterday, I sat there and listened. And what I heard was a proposal for a one cent sales tax. That's revenue. He couldn't move it with either caucus. The majority of both voted no for it. And so to sit here and act like one group won't do something while the other wants to is disingenuous. I'm tired of the posturing, I'm tired of the pontificating, I'm tired of playing the cameras, and I'm tired of the bloviating. I'm sick of it. Our constituents are sick of it. Our constituents are sick of it. You know, when I ran for this office, I knew there were considerable politics involved in getting elected. I, I knew that. I never dreamed that it'd be this way in serving. And so it's obvious to me as I've watched this process unfold, several factions are in play. There's a group that says we have to fill the gap with all new taxes and fees. That's what the governor has said. That's what he sent us. All new taxes, all new fees. And if people believe in their hearts that's the way we ought to do it, who am I to question that? There's another group that says no new taxes or fees. <laughs> and they're prominent in the House. I respect that too. If they believe in their heart, that's what, that's what they believe. They have every right to believe it. And frankly, I have a tendency to sympathize with them. Then there's a few that just want to blame somebody else or make somebody else look bad in posturing. And I say to that third group, shame on you. I can deal with the first two groups, but shame on the third group. I said earlier our constituents are fed up with government. And I think West Virginia is ahead of the curve in that regard. If you look at the Trump and Sanders phenomenon, people are fed up, folks. They're fed up with business as usual. Oh, well, Senator Gaunt, you haven't been here long enough. You don't know how things are done. No, I don't. But I know what people are fed up with. State government lives beyond its means. State government has grown 24 percent over the last 10 years while our population and our revenue streams have decreased. We should have figured this out five years ago. And yes, we have been taking hundreds of millions of dollars out of the rainy day fund 
already. And we borrow it to, play, to pay the shortage in our unemployment compensation fund. Where's been the outrage about that? And all of a sudden, there's outrage. Grover government has grown 24 percent in the last 10 years. Oh, but Senator Gonch, much of that is out of our control. It's been Medicaid. It's, it's things that we just have no control over. You just don't understand, Senator Gonch. I do know this, Medicaid's going to continue to be a problem. Just because of the expansion, according to what I read, it's going to cost us 50 or 60 million dollars like next year or the year after. And I know that PEIA next year is going to ask for 60 million dollars additional like they asked for 43 million dollars this year, not counting the rate of medical inflation. We've just started to scrape the surface. Folks are fed up, and here are some more of the things they're fed up about. This body, these bodies, are responsible for nine defined benefit pension plans. Folks, there are almost no defined benefit pensions plans in the private sector anymore. And we're counting on a revenue stream created by 7.5% return on our investments to meet our obligation. Oh, but Senator Gonch, we have to keep these defined benefit pension plans. Folks serve several years in the legislature, then they move to another branch of government with a much higher salary for the last few years of employment to enhance their retirement. I saw a judge in Kanawha County who retired got his full retirement, ran for office again, and got his full salary. Oh, but we fixed that, Senator Gonch. Folks retire in state government, some of them at 50 and 55 years old, then they return to work per diem or as a contract employee or a substitute teacher. Where's the outrage about that kind of thing? Judges' pension plans, while others are underfunded, we, we're happy now that some of these pension plans are funded at 63 and 68 percent. Sigh of relief because they used to be only 20 percent funded. Judges' pensions are funded at 158 percent. Our cities and towns operate under a plan that we created, we created it, and some of them on the brink of financial disaster. No wonder the funds, the plans are underfunded. We're told that we can't get to special revenue funds. Oh, Senator Gaunt, you can't get to Senate these special revenue accounts. All the while, we learned there are dozens of such accounts with money under every rock, but we can't get to it. The worst part might be that while we're still trying to produce a budget, the money keeps rolling into those special revenue accounts. You understand that? We're struggling to find $270 million, and all of these special revenue accounts continue to receive money. All the while, folks are encouraged with the assistance of some of the politicians around here and some of the members of the media to worry about PEIA, Promise Scholarship, Medicaid, or even, lo and behold, a total shut, shutdown of the government. Well, folks are tired of hearing that some employees don't have enough work to keep them busy for a full day. Do we have too many state employees? I submit that we do. They're tired of the spending frenzy that takes place every May and June because the agencies in this state have to spend the money or lose it. People are tired of that. It's a disincentive. We ought to be incentivizing these state agencies to save money. Instead, we incentivize them to spend every penny of it. People are tired of the cronyism and the good old boy network. People are tired of the members of the Board of Public Works having employees spread around the state whose primary responsibility is to ensure that their bosses get reelected. Folks are tired of it. They're tired of the duplication, the inefficiency, and the waste. Nearly every state agency has a press secretary. Nearly every state agency has a general counsel. Some have assistant general counsels. We have a division of personnel, yet every agency has an HR unit. Explain that to your constituents. Where's the outrage about some of this? We spent $92 million the last time I looked in building six alone. 
not including what each individual county spends on, the, on their education. And then there are the Reese's, which I haven't even brought up. All the while, school populations are declining. And we can't pay teachers a decent wage. The truth is, we choose not to pay them a decent wage. We could find money if we wanted to. We find money for the things we want to find money for. And we choose not to pay good teachers well. The State Board of Education answers to nobody, as far as I can tell. They set pretty much their own salary. Last I looked, $147,000. All of this added to this Building 6, $92 million, or whatever it is under this budget. There's no fiscal check on the judicial branch in this state. Oh, but Senator Gonch, that's constitutional. We can't get to that. They set their own budget. They do whatever they want, pretty much. We can't get to that. Maybe if you're around here long enough, Senator Gonch, you'll understand what we're saying. Well, Mr. President, I hope I'm never around here long enough to learn that. We pass bills and we dedicate every single penny of the revenue generated by the, bill, the fireworks bill last year. We dedicate it to specific recipients. We just exacerbate the special revenue situation. More money continues to flow into them. We've more state colleges than we can afford. We closed poor West Virginia Tech last year to the chagrin of many of the people in, in Fayette County in that area. It was sad. But you know what? We didn't have really the guts to do that. We, we called on Dr. Gee to do it. We've got others that need to, I'm sorry to say, need to go. We poorly manage our state's real estate and what we lease and what we own. We have 55 counties with 55 sheriffs and 55 assessors and 55 county commissions and 55 county clerks and 55 boards of education. We could probably manage with half or less than that. And at the, yesterday I heard that we have a, a school in Fayette County uh, 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 that, that can't make payroll today. I hear in Boone County that they're struggling to make payroll. We have too many boards and commissions. It's just another place to put people, more of the cronyism, more of the people who've helped us do things, another place for cronyism to flourish. We subsidize everything that requests it, fairs, festivals, Tamarack, college athletics, golf courses, golf tournaments, dogs, horses, you name it, we'll subsidize it. And it's important to somebody. I'm just listening here. Oh, we can't raise revenue, but please don't tear up this program or that program. Or we've got to have that million dollars there or that $150,000 there. You ask for it, we'll subsidize it. I'm all for seed money for some of these things. But at some point, they either have to make it or they don't. And all the while, we can't pave our roads or fix our last count, 1,092 judged structurally deficient bridges in the state. And we'll address it someday, maybe when one of them falls with a load of people on it. We can't or won't make completion of the Coalfield Expressway a reality, something that could mean significant progress for southern West Virginia in the area south of the Canal River. Our regulatory structure is the worst in the country. Worst in the country. We're 50th. But we don't want to mess with that. It, we don't want to mess with it. We have a broken welfare system, which encourages folks to stay home rather than work. At the same time, we can't pay social workers a living wage. We choose not to because we spend the money other ways. I could go on and on and on, and I won't. I haven't even touched on the Department of Transportation or the Parkways Authority. It's just filled with it. But Senator Gonch, we can't do that. We can't get to that. It's a sad day, Mr. President. We should strive here to be problem solvers, but I fear we've become part of the problem by playing these political games and not really keeping our eye on the ball. I long for the day 
where we can rely on revenue estimates that, re that we receive and feel comfortable that every dollar that is spent has been properly vetted. And truthfully, right now, I cannot look my constituents in the eye, Mr. President, and tell them that I believe that's the case. So this is like a continuing resolution. I'm going to vote for it because I, get, I, I think it gets us off of the precipice of this financial uh, close of the state, put the state out of business. A continuing resolution, um, and I'm sad about it. I'm sad because we don't have an executive that has the courage to make the cuts that ought to be made. I'm sad that we don't have the fortitude to do the things that really need to be done to turn this state around. Thank you, sir.